Hello and welcome back to day two of the Vision Show 2016. Yesterday was well attended, but today is set to be even busier with some great content coming up. But I have to put my feet up before that because yesterday's exhibitors party was pretty good. <laughs> Work hard, play hard. Now I need a coffee though. I'm with Colin Soman, editor of the ITS International Magazine. So Colin, what's really stood out for you this year? Uh, I think there have been some great advances uh, over the last two years since the last show uh, in sensor technology, uh, in lighting systems and also in the definition, that the analytics that, that are applied to all the video streams that, that, that we get from the traffic vision sector. Name your top three highlights. I think that would have to be some of the sensor technology we've seen much higher pixel rates which gives greater scope for picking out detail and, and for defining objects. One of the biggest advances I've seen is the ability to be able to introduce a, a level of intelligence into previously dumb, as they would call them, IP cameras. And again, brilliant for the, the traffic sector authorities that are unable for budgetary reasons to be able to replace all their old cameras with new cameras. This gives them an option to be able to introduce that intelligence into their existing camera network. And what should we look out for in the future? That's a difficult one. Uh, the, the, the capabilities that you see in, in the hall here are absolutely astronomical. And if if there are problems out there in the traffic sector that people want to overcome, then they really need to come and talk to the people here, the exhibitors, these type of people, because there are so many solutions that could be on offer. Jerome, how is Sony using the latest sensor technology? Yes, Sony have introduced uh, various new sensor technology. This includes uh, global shutter CMOS sensors and also the Starvis sensors, which are very sensitive. Sony is using the global shutter CMOS sensors inside our machine vision XCG camera lineup. Uh, so this, this camera are using gigabit Ethernet and uh, camera link interface in order to provide uh, the best interface depending on the sensors. Uh, Sony is integrating these sensors with uh, advanced pre-processing inside FPGA, inside these cameras, in order to provide uh, sensor compensation, uh, lens compensation, and also uh, some uh, advanced features like uh, high dynamic range uh, and uh, adjustable uh, uh, local gains. So thanks to that, uh, this can be used in a, a traffic surveillance application to capture license plates uh, very clearly. Uh, the global shutter CMOS sensors allow us to freeze the image in a very uh, clear way, uh, which helps to, uh, to read license plate very clearly. And the high sensitivity sensors? Yes, Sony is using the Starvis sensors inside uh, the FCB camera modules. So these camera modules have uh, very high sensitivity and also provide uh, zoom and autofocus features. This is very useful to uh, monitor some uh, remote incidents uh, because we can zoom uh, very far in the distance and we can uh, observe any uh, incident even in low light condition or if there is uh, some uh, bright and dark areas which requires wide dynamic range. Thanks to that, uh, you can monitor and manage the incident. I'm here on the Vision component stand. Now, Jan, tell me a bit more about the different lighting and camera systems here. Okay, uh, great that you're here. 
So what we have is an embedded camera system that does all the processing for ALPR on a very small, tiny board. What you see here is the first prototype of a combined system with uh, two camera heads using two wavelengths. We have infrared for ALPR reading. And the nice thing, the infrared for ALPR reading is flashing all the time. Using infrared, you have two benefits. Human beings won't see the infrared lighting, so it won't be disturbed with the cameras flashing all the time. And second thing, the reflective the reflectiveness of the license plates is quite good in the wavelengths of infrared. And as soon as we got somebody doing a speeding, something reading the ALPR, we go to the other one, have invisible light to get color information and just surrounding information of the car itself. So we have everything in one compact unit and everything is handled by the CPU board that is handling the timing of the image acquisition, also the reading of the ALPR. That's fine if you can afford new installations, but what if you can't? No problem. You just take off those and what's left is the tiny board. If you have an installation using IP cameras, for example, you can use this stream of the IP cameras going to this small little tiny board and all the ALPR stuff will be done on the board using the images coming from existing IP cameras. Brendan, tell me about this new high-resolution camera of yours. Uh, the new Luminera LT29059 camera is very high-resolution, high-quality product uh, with very low noise and high dynamic range. And it, it suits itself very well for traffic applications such as high-speed tolling, red light, and speed enforcement. And uh, because of the resolution, it works very well for monitoring many lanes of traffic at the same time. Uh, the other really nice feature about this product it, is that we do offer the Canon front-end uh, lens control so that the software and the host application can actually adjust the focus and the iris um, in real time. The benefit of having the iris control is that it lets you open it up at night time um, when you need to be able to capture as much light as possible. What is the unique selling point about this camera? This is the new Luminera LT545 product. Uh, it's based on the new Sony Previous Global Shutter CMOS <laughs> technology, and it's available in a wide range of products from 3 megapixel, 5, 8.9, and 12 megapixel. The other great differentiating uh, product that you have here, or feature that you have in this product, is that it supports P-Iris. We're one of the only vendors in the industry that supports P-Iris with this product and this sensor on that interface. And that's really great for ITS applications because ITS is always outdoors and the lighting conditions change all the time. So with the camera and the software, you can change the iris manually or you can set it to auto iris as well. It's been another busy day here at the Vision Show. There definitely feels like there's more people here than there were yesterday. Now, what's really stood out today is that ITS applications have taken center stage for many of the products and services on display. That's a massive change from just a few years ago when technology was co-opted from other industries. Now, if you haven't seen exactly what you're looking for, do not despair. We have one more video coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned and I'll see you then.